and welcome to the Reflection Show with me, Martha Spice. Are you aware of the National Youth Policy? Have you heard about it? How do you understand it? Today, I'll be engaging with the National Youth Champions, let me see, at the Northern Sector or the Northern Zone, under the watch of the National Youth Authority. It was launched in November 2022 and all that we want to do is to make you understand how you and i can actively participate i'll be speaking with some youth champions they are supposed to make sure that they easily bring out the information one by one for us to learn understand and know all about it the book is very big and i know you and i we don't like reading sometimes but it is a bad habit as well but they are here to let us understand of course some of the most important factors in the national youth policy booklet so that as we go along as young people we'll be able to understand what this is focused about happy new year once again it's 2023 how has that year been so far i believe that we are making sure that your dream and your, your resolutions are going to be accomplish accordingly let's go for a break when we are back we delve into the conversation do stay tuned i am martha inspires Welcome back from the break. Have you seen this book anywhere? Do you have the soft copy probably, or you've seen the hard copy? This is the government of Ghana under the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the National Youth Authority. They are out with the National Youth Policy that's for 2022 and this year. And the theme is benefit for youth involve, involve youth. youth together for a prosperous future wow um it's a big book and i know that like i said earlier on some of us may not be able to read the whole booklet so i have here the youth policy champions i think would have some uh, in other parts of ghana right um i think we are currently doing it in the northern region in the northern yeah the in, in the northern zone so i'll be speaking with alas and musa timtoni and emmanuel indukwe tochuku I hope I, I hope I got the name correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the sure youth did. policy. Some of the youth policy champions that were unveiled in November 2022, making sure that they are able to share these um, information to all of us, mostly on social media and the activities they engage with other young people. Let me start with Tim Tony. What is the national youth policy all about? Um, thank you very much to the organizers of this program, the Reflection Show, especially to you, Mata Inspires. I think it's really an honor to be on this show. Thank you. And I would like, before anything, I would like to say Happy New Year to our audience. Mm -hmm. And I hope and believe that we'll have the best out of the year. Um, the National Youth Policy document actually went through a series of channels to, you know, be in this form. And it started in the year 1999 under the able leadership of His Excellency Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, the late president. From 1999 to 2009, it was finalized. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, the document was launched. However, there was the need to review the document to reflect the realities mm -hmm. of all that we are going through as young people of this nation. So the review was done in the year 2018. And I clearly remember. I was at St. B Lodge with my colleague here in the Upper, upper West region, where well, to be precise, where the review was done. It, generally, it was done across the country, but we had ours at St. B Lodge, I think that was in 2018. So after the review, um, there was a need to put it together and then launch it. So on 13th August 2022, I think that was last year, mm. it was launched by the President, His Excellency, the President of Ghana. Mm. Nana Adodankwa Ikufuadu at mm. Anakazo mm. in the eastern region of this country. And on November 1, as a region, 
I mean, the Northern Region, we also decided to launch the regional perspective of the document. Okay. So we did that on November 1, on the day of the African Youth Day, right? Mm. So we launched it, and we believe that a document of this nature needs to be launched with a project, something that would drive it, something that would enable us to realize all that is enshrined in this mm. document. So we launched it with the Project Citizen Youth, Think Ghana First. Mm. And we believe that it will serve as yeah. the driver for yeah. this particular document. Mm. And I remember clearly that you were a member of the Attitudinal Change and Mindset mm. um, Ambassadors. And I believe that in your daily endeavors, you would portray that and influence the attitudes of people, especially the young ones of this um, state, mm. towards positive things. So, you know, that's how the document Policy has... came about. Yeah, sure. Ima, what is it all about? Thank you very much. So, taking cognizance from the fact that um, as a nation, we have a lot of programs that have been engendered towards youth empowerment mm. from state institutions or state actors, I mean, the ministries and agencies mm. in charge of youth affairs, they've been running programs. The government by itself have also been running programs to engender youth development and empowerment. Um, on the larger or broader front, you have the CSOs, NGOs as well, who are also running different forms of programs to engender youth development. So it became incumbent on the National Youth Authority, which is under the Ministry of Youth and Sports, to come up with a coordinating framework mm. where all the programs that are addressing the challenges faced by youth can be put together mm. in sub themes with action points for okay. to guide interventions that will engender youth development. Mm. Most importantly, looking at the various stakeholders that are necessary to carry out these various interventions. Mm. Primarily, the youth are, are, are a particular or should I say the primary stakeholders in this in this regard. Mm. So they have a very major part to play. So not just the state institutions and others, mm. but with this policy, a lot of premium has been pay, placed on youth participation, yeah. youth taking actions to ensure that whatever is being done by what, whatever stakeholder benefits mm. them directly. Yeah. Yeah. So that is what makes this also very inclusive mm. because right now the youth do not need to just sit down and wait for others to think for them and say, these are your challenges and we would want mm. to solve them for you. But they themselves are able to identify these are our challenges. So we realized that during the formulation processes, a lot of reviews were done, yeah. youths were involved, Great. youth agencies were involved, Great. NGOs focused on youth development were involved, Great. the UN agencies were involved, all of them, including state agencies and other, other stakeholders that are focus towards youth mm -hmm. uh, development. So basically, it is to address the youth challenges by the youth themselves, mm -hmm. for, the, for youth the youth and Except with the youth. Mm. Thank you very hey, much. <laughs> this one there, by the youth, for the youth and with the youth. I'm just going through this youth, youth policy and I'm seeing so much that is in here. We have the youth and agriculture. We have the how young people can um, tackle hunger and poverty. And I think that, like he said, as we ourselves that should take the initiatives because we are going to take over from our fathers and our grandfathers. Now, what are some of the sectors or the chapters or some of the things that are in the youth policy? Yes. So you'd realize that the challenges youth face every day are multifaceted. Mm. So you would have youth facing um, challenges that are linked to employment or okay. the economy. Okay. You have some facing challenges that are linked to, say, poverty yeah. and hunger. Mm. You have them facing challenges that are linked to education, mm. health care, health services, challenges that are linked to transportation, mobility, migration, and okay. all those stuff. So the policy is encompassing. It captures these, I mean, multifaceted challenges that you face. Mm. For instance, when you take youth mobility and migration, mm. the policy takes cognizance of the fact that a lot of youth in search of greener pastures, for instance, are moving from the rural areas to, to the, the urban areas. areas. And even within the urban areas, 
they're moving from settlements to the cent central business district mm. yeah. to ensure that they get things to do. And when you even look at surrounding areas, peri-urban areas, those surrounding the urban areas, mm -hmm. we have people also migrating from there to the urban areas or where they feel there are economic activities ongoing. But you see, the issue there is that whilst these people migrate to look for greener pastures, they face some challenges with, with, with regards to, say, accommodation, with regards to job with dignity, with regards to uh, being able to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. So you look at people, for instance, migrating, young ladies migrating from the northern region here to Accra to engage in Kayai, mm -hmm. to engage in other form of smaller, I mean, scale yeah. businesses. They are taking advantage of. You, mm -hmm. you see some of them carrying heavy loads with child at their back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not their will for them to get pregnant. But because, for instance, they are not able to afford some basic needs, they end up engaging in transactional <laughs> sets. Some are even raped. So it looks at this issue and how do we ensure that when people migrate, the migration is one that does not infringe on their rights, a migration that does not take advantage of them, but a migration that ensures that for whatever purpose they are migrating from that settlement to that place, mm. it is achieved in such a way that their mm. rights are safeguarded they are dignity protected, are safeguarded, yeah. they are protected, and also they are able to say if they go there for employment, they are able to get a certain form of job opportunities that will be able to provide mm. for their needs. So it looks at all these things all among these things, others. Yeah. Tim Tony, do we have protection policies? How are we protecting the youth of Ghana? Uh, Me, my main concern has always been young people who are being raped or taken advantage of. Some of them are not most times. Um, how do I put it? You go report and nothing is done. What is the youth policy saying? Um, yeah, I think um, there are lots to protect the youth. And clearly, I remember in 2022, I was at a meeting. I think that was the original child protection something something i represented mm -hmm. my boss over there and I, i'm speaking as a region you know mm -hmm. i'm localizing everything over there we deliberated on issues like protecting rapes i mean those who rape are raped. victims yeah victims of rape and we decided that there should be a one-stop center at the, the, the i mean teaching hospital where issues of such nature can be reported mm -hmm. and this organization is going to be manned by certain bodies in collaboration with the national youth authority which is i mean the mother i mean association or let me say the mother body as far as this particular thing is concerned so there are rules and regulations put in place to protect the youth of this country so that is it okay now i just going through how are their policy champions you are the champions sure how are you going to if make this youth, national youth policy effective okay because it has to get to the grassroots okay our focus is to use social media beyond social media how are you going to get this policy to every young person out there especially okay. the illiterate okay the, um, the bible says for lack of knowledge my people do what perish. they perish right so first of all what we need to do is that we need to let the youth understand what this document is all about what are some of the things enshrined in it and what role are they supposed to play as youth so first of all we need to do the communication very well and currently i think last year 2022 we started working on that the social media on twitter on linkedin on facebook and we are actually looking at communicating the messages to the youth and the illiterates we have the intention of moving to communities mm. and then radio stations mm. to tell the youth to tell our colleagues who do not have the liberty to travel through the pages of this document to know what it is all about and what they are supposed to do whether they are supposed to put stakeholders on their toes whether they are supposed i mean they themselves are supposed to do something to make sure that things are properly placed for them so okay now as 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 part of the activities that the ny is doing are you working with other partners to get this apart from just selecting the youth champions are there other partners that you are working with to get this information to them um thank you very much i believe today we are here as youth champions but just to i mean digress a bit to the sphere of the ny indeed 
even if you look at the SDGs, Go 17 talks about partnership. So, and if you look at the youth policy as well, when you look at the various stakeholders, you, you realize that it is um, cross, uh, cross cutting. It does not only limit to state agencies or just the youth. You look at CSOs, you look at NGOs, you look at everyone. So, we are partnering with everyone, everyone that has youth at heart, including the youth, youth focused organization, youth led organization. Everyone is needed to ensure that the youth policy is implemented holistically because you realize that the lives we live are interlinked and intertwined it doesn't matter whether what you do does not involve a youth directly indirectly yeah, it might have some i mean spiraling or cascading effects on the life of the youth so everyone is needed for the holistic implementation mm -hmm. of the policy so for instance if you look at the youth policy champions you realize that the nya is collaborating with YAFO, is collaborating with Northern Regional Youth Network. And even if you look at the composition of the youth policy champions, for instance, we have a lot of youth from different, different organizations, some from active youth, some from uh, Re Northern Regional Youth Parliament, some from Activista, some from a whole lot of youth, uh, I mean, groups. groups within the Northern region. So we are trying to bring everyone on board. This is just the beginning but as my colleague said we have the the intention of ensuring that the message goes down to the last person and sometimes people say so me i'm not a youth me i'm not a youth. please if you are <laughs> within the, the youth, definition of that's youth? what i'm coming to <laughs> we have different definition of youth. some look at it as people between the ages of 15 to 24 that's the un and commonwealth i mean definitions you have the AU definition of 15 to 29. And so to ensure that we have a harmonization of all these, the NYA categorizes or per in Ghana as a, a categorizes a youth as someone between the ages of 15 to 35. So if you are 30 years, 31, 32, 34, 35, whether you have been married and you have even given birth, you are still a youth. So things that are mm. concerns of the youth, you should take interest in them because that is what we are trying to do to ensure that we mainstream youth development youth challenges into programs interventions and issues we even discuss at the local level that's what we are trying to, to achieve mm -hmm. so if you feel well i'm married or i have a comfortable work i'm doing but even though i fall between the age bracket of 15 to 35 or well, these are un unemployed people or people <laughs> fighting for whatever they want they should go and fight no <laughs> you should be interested because we need a holistic approach mm -hmm. you might be working comfortably a young person might not be having work to do the person might be involved in vices mm -hmm. who knows mm -hmm. if the person is an arm robber you might be the victim. comfortable you might be the victim but if you are taking interest and even ensure that we have mechanisms or even advocate for same mm. for these young people to have better things to do you mm. might deceive mm. who knows mm. so everyone is involved the youth themselves and people who are non-youth but interested in i mean and parents of, of youth yes parents <laughs> of youth you see that's why i say everyone is involved you have to take particular interest in what i mean matters to the youth and have a deliberate intention to involve these challenges into whatever interventions or programs you want to run because five years from now is the youth that are going to be benefiting from whatever interventions yeah. you have yeah. 10 years from now 20 50 years from now mm. so if you don't involve them in the planning design intervention programming implementation stages of all these programs and interventions then you are just thinking for them yeah. and that is not what the policy is about it's mm. about the youth for the youth and with the youth yeah. Like you wanted to add yeah, um, I think I wanted to look at what a youth is all about. And he explained that per the UN definition of a youth, anybody between the ages of 15 to 24 and the Commonwealth, I think is 15 to 29. And when you look at that, look at the African Youth Charter, it's, it places the youth between the ages of 15 to 35. And then um, as, as a country, we are members of Commonwealth, we are members of um, the EU, and then we are equally participants as far as the World Health Organization is concerned. And once you go and look at the Children's Act of Ghana, I think that's Act 509 or so, 1998, it, it says that anybody below, below the ages of 18 is, 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 is a child, but anybody above that is a youth. And 
I would like to quote this um, honourable man, man, or let's say honourable member, a former member of parliament and a former director of education, Northern Region, Alaji Cambodia. He said, a youth is not just any other person, any person within that bracket, but anybody who has the soul and then the body with the youth. Even if the person is 90 years, the person is a youth. Mm. So it does not necessarily mean that you have to fall within that age range, 15 to 35. No. You can be as old as the moon and the sun. But then if your body and soul is with the youth, then you are a youth. Mm. <laughs> so it means at the end of the day, everybody is even a youth. I'm just looking at some of these things and I don't know if we could um, read some of them out. I think um, we would, would, would like to look at youth and agriculture right yes and then the youth well youth well health and then well-being so and youth and agriculture some of i the think you have the soft copy um emmanuel if you yeah, yeah, yeah he has some that. of that let's just stick okay through the youth and agriculture and because i'm passionate about it baby because agriculture is one of the issues that we actually have to spearhead on i think it's on the page 28 on the page as well point 34 as well so i i just want to take us through one point have you seen it or i should go ahead okay or or, or tim tony want to take that yeah i think um agriculture as far as we are concerned as far as you and i are concerned still remains the backbone of our economy our, our economy and there's a need as young people or as youth to delve into this area because there are scores of opportunities that we still need to, need to explore but it appears we are so focused on white color jobs that i mean we, we tend to forget what would keep us moving it's not just about the certificate but what impact can you make after that certificate so the impact that would be readily felt is the is, 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 is in the agricultural sector as a young person i think this year i want to delve into that i want to feed the country i want to feed the world and and the best of all i mean works is agriculture so as youth we need to delve into that and i clearly remember last year the ny northern regional secretary delved into that and they had a farm at Myung. yeah so they started with they started youth in agriculture and the youth of the area were actually involved in this particular intervention so i believe that as young people of this I mean, nation. We need not to focus so much on the, you know, read or chew, pause, pass, and go. You know, we need to actually get that agri part of us, and then feed the world as well as, you know, Africa. Feed the world. I think I keep hearing that a lot. I'm seeing HIV and AIDS. It's been a big issue. A lot of people think that HIV AIDS is gone, especially when COVID came. We have forgotten about it. But HIV and AIDS is still on the rise. Okay. a lot of young people are not taking care of, of themselves and i'm seeing substance abuse yeah, I'm seeing um, mental health like yeah, just take us through yeah, some of the I th policies I think, okay I think, you want to come in Ima? yeah so okay. um i think for that aspect is it's it's under the youth health and well-being yeah, yeah sure. so you realize that for the youth health and well-being it encompasses a lot reproductive health mental health and other forms of general well-being so you realize that indeed, when you look at sexual reproductive health and rights, we, are, we, we, we know, we know that no matter what you do currently, a lot of youths in the country are sexually active. But what do they do to protect themselves? Mm -hmm. How do we keep the rising teenage pregnancy incidence? So that is what we are trying to, mm -hmm. I mean, look at the nuances. Okay, so they have different sectors, one on health, some on health. Economy, and, and yes, so okay. on the health aspect, that's where we have the HIV. HIV is yeah, so in this, substance abuse and all that. As you said, um, the, the HIV is incidence is on the rise. Mm. Even though at, we don't have much more advocacy and much more campaign on it currently, the reality on the ground is that it is increasing. So I would like to take this opportunity to advise my fellow young people to follow the abc i mean <laughs> protocol abstain abstinence is still the best abstain if you know you can't abstain please be safe condomize don't <laughs> compromise hmm. it's very 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 important don't because, compromise yes condomize course. don't compromise hmm. <laughs> the pills and the injectables do not protect you do from stis yeah, and hiv yeah, from anything. they only protect you from being pregnant but compromise you don't know the 
who your partner is, I mean, involved with or whatever. But just condomize and don't compromise. Don't say, oh, let me go raw to show love. It doesn't hey. work anywhere. You yeah, would... people, is that what we are doing? Yes, I'm sorry. So <laughs> if you love me, then, you know, if, if have you unprotected me, sex with me. Yeah. If you love me, obey my commandment. And have unprotected <laughs> sex with me. So it doesn't help anyone. That's yes, true. so that's one aspect. Mental health is very, very important. Sometimes we tend to ignore that. Mm. You see, the, the, the psychological stresses young people go through are very, very, mm. in fact, currently they are very, very, I mean, prone. People are unable to cater for themselves, the economic situation, family issues, mm -hmm. peer pressure, and all those things. Whole lot. The kind of thought process that goes on with them, you, you get to realize that they are under some pressure to either conform with the narrative or not to conform. They if are thinking they of have an iPhone 4. Yes, they are thinking of how to <laughs> how to be the best they can for their families, how to rise to the lowest ebb of poverty to give their families some breathing space. Mm -hmm. So you realize that a lot of people are thinking of how to be better, how to conform, how to fit in, and and. Is something that a lot of people sometimes can't cope in. Mm. Can't cope with. That's why it's also linked to drug abuse. So some are trying to find solace. Temporal in, happiness. Yeah, temporal sure. relief. Temporal solace yeah. in drugs, the different forms of drugs, uh amnesia, tramadol, alcohol, the rest. They have one that even hallucination or hallucinators mm. or something. Like <laughs> what is all this? Yeah. But that is the reality we are faced with, and we have taken cognizance of that. That's why the policy is trying to. Well, look I think at that I keep saying that we are privileged to know better, so yeah, not sure. to do those things. That is it. A lot of people, that is the world they grew up in. Most of them grew up and they saw their parents taking alcohol, they saw their parents taking all of these things. So it's really like something it's normal to, to them, it's, normal. You know, it's a norm. But in as much as that is something you might have found yourself in it is possible to come out from that. Let's go for a break. We'll be right back. Books by Pastor A.L. Fant. They are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Simple to comprehend, relevant in application, and so lovely to read. Grab copies like Dynamics of Kingdom Influence, Dynamics of Ministry, Marcus King for Church Workers, Money Matters, and she calls herself a woman. This marriage must work. No more curses. Loaded mouth. Secrets of kingdom dominion. The exploits of service. Things fall apart. Church without bleeding pulpit. Singles mingle and many more. Welcome back to the Reflection Show with me, Martha in Spice. We are looking at the youth policy <coughs> and a lot of us have not heard about it. A lot of us have heard about it, but we really don't know what it is. We want to spend time today and take you through what the youth policy is all about and how all of us can actively participate. And of course, with the youth policy champions, they'll be sharing some of the nuggets on their social media handles every now and then. You could probably follow them and get to see whatever is happening also when they post make sure you can share to other young people as well let me come to tim tony on the health you want to say something about that yeah um i think as far as the health and well-being is concerned we are actually doing a lot but it appears we are doing nothing because 10 percent out of every adolescence i mean between 10 to 19 currently have their first child 10 percent Mm. Yeah, the research indicates that when you travel through the 10 policy, to 19 year olds already have yeah, children. They already have 10% of them. When you travel through the I mean pages of this document, mm. you get to realize that. And he mentioned the age when I mean when he was presenting or when he was giving his words. And 
last year 2022 around june i think the data was around 23,495 cases hiv cases so it's, it's really alarming and as a state or as a nation there is a need to do something and we as a body as um people i mean from the youth and working with the youth we are doing something to make sure that this is kept mm. and that is why we have the rh talk reproductive health talk mm. he has championed that i think um that was in last year 2022 november 3 we were at savogu senior high school to educate them on their sexual reproductive health rights and then hiv AIDS related issues and we have done that across across a lot of schools including tamasco calisco ganasco and then tamale girls so we are really doing a lot just to make sure that the young people of this nation are not do not become victims of such instances so the national youth authority and as policy champions would also re-echo that now let's go into the book a lot of us might just see a big book like this <laughs> And it's kind of so boring to read it. I think most of us just read when we have an exam to write. Yeah, that is but it. we need to stop that. We need to be able to understand that for us to get the accurate information as young people, we need to read. I feel like this this policy has seven chapters. Yeah. And every chapter, let, let me take us through. Chapter one is the, about the introduction and the background. You get to see the rationale, the purpose of the policy, economic and financial empowerment for young people, which they mentioned early on entrepreneurship and financial inc inclusion youth employment and labor issues hunger and poverty youth in agric youth migration and mobility youth and environmental sustainability in fact it's it's a lot then you come to um the the key policies issues youth profiles in ghana active citizenship and participation in government uh, go governance youth conflict and peace building then chapter two talks about the global and national context yeah. legislative frameworks then chapter three looks at the vision goal objectives core values guiding principles then you see the precautions of the policy then i move to five you have implementation and coordination you have resource mobilization chapter six m and e review cycle and then in chapter seven looks at the communication strategy for the policy it's it's loaded it has a lot of these um, <laughs> things that i think that it's it's good you still get to see the acronyms most of us don't know the acronyms of the some of the things that young people are used to you see acronyms like ges get fund afdb we don't really understand some of these things dylg these are very i think before we believe i will take my time to even mention even just like five or ten of some of these acronyms for yeah, us sure. to, to see how we can go about it and i think these are also some of the partners that are also spearheading this agenda as well now let me come to tim tony as well on the on the policies are there more policies you want to brief us on for our viewers who might be watching us or if Ima wants to take us through some of the policies as well more, just policies. more of the policies in the book oh, okay okay just okay. like to explain them into deeper insights okay. like some of the things you'll be sharing on social media what does it entail for us to fully understand them okay thank you Marwood. okay Take care of that. Yeah, so um one of the policies i want to talk about is youth employment mm. you see it's it's very very important with the kind of economic situation we find ourselves in a lot of young people have the desire to be employed in should i say well-meaning and legal jobs where they'll be able to cater from them for themselves but you look at the statistics shows that those that are supposed to be economically engaged between 15 to 64 for ghana uh, to what 60. You call it, 60. <coughs> so between 15 to 60 they are supposed to be economically engaged mm. you ask yourself when you take you segregate between 15 to 35 how many are actually employed <laughs> that's the issue then even within this when you divide it into the context of gender mm. male and female mm. what is the ratio between yeah. male, male employment and female. and female employment and realize that even the female unemployment is high than the male and uh, employment. employment also those between 15 to 35 their employment level is less 
than those between the 36 upwards. So this should tell you something that like a lot of youths are not economically mm. engaged. So the policy looks at how then do we remedy this? Yeah. How it's then do we remedy this? And you through the proposals, you realize that um, TVET has been Not proposed. Really. Yes, so trying to ensure that youth have the skills needed by the job market. So we have a lot of people going through the normal degree, degree courses. You complete the issue is what the program you've read, do we have demand for same? Mm. Because the economy we live in is a free market. Demand and supply runs the economy. So if there is no demand for the skill you have, obviously you will be you will not be engaged. So we are looking at TVET. TVET right now is in need. If you have a handiwork, you have a skill. You don't have, sometimes you don't even mm -hmm. need anyone to employ you. Yourself can get your small corner, start your thing yeah. small small. You mm -hmm. can get some little little income along the line. You can seek for grants. You can seek for financial aid, or even by your own self, your profits and other forms of income can help you expand. You might even end up providing employment for other people. So that's one aspect it looks at, that you should not be fixated on white color jobs. Mm. Look at what can give you immediate employment. Also, the policy advises that for youth that are trying to, I mean, those that are going to the normal formal educa educational sector, you should try as much as possible to be conscious of what the job market needs. So that when you read a course, the course is directly linked to a job skill mm. that is in demand. Mm. You get it. So, for instance, currently we are in the fourth economic revolution. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are moving towards industrialization and IT. Mm. So why don't you read an IT related yeah. course yeah, instead okay. of a normal book and pen course? And even the accounting we, we learn in <clears throat> SS, it just to I, I saw it. It was it a tweet or a post on social media that said that. Uh, even with the math questions, you only learn to solve a post question. They'll say, Yeah, if Ama has 15,000 cities mm -hmm. and purchase this of 2,000, what, 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 at the end of the financial year, calculate the what, what profit. So you come out and you're not even able to even use those ones to solve your own issues because <laughs> it is not realistic. It is yeah. not in the computer setting. So you see that people will finish learning accounting and come out and they still have to go and learn accounting and computing. Yes, yeah. to be able to work in the bank yes yeah, sure. because i'm learning accounting but i'm doing everything mm -hmm. on paper how can we using this as a backbone be able to advise ourselves as young people to choose the right perspective of i don't want to say career or let me say the next phase of what we want to achieve how so, do we tackle so let that? me just conclude on this mm -hmm. so you realize that again the policy also advises the people in the educational sector to come up with programs mm. that are linked to the job market. Mm. Programs that are practical enough to give people hands-on skills. That is why earlier when I stated that, you see, the policy is encompassing. Mm. It involves everyone. So where a, a policy theme is linked to the educational sector, the, the stakeholders in the educational sector are involved in it mm. and must play their part. So it means that currently, the programs being run by or in our educational system, we need to review them yeah. to ensure that they are in tune with the prevailing job skills in demand so that you train students and they don't come out as just products of I the have school, a degree and that's but important. people who are able to solve real life issues with the practical hands on skills they have gotten. So basically, that's it. Everyone is involved. They use themselves have to be conscious of what they job market demands and those offering their skills also have to review their training to ensure that this, the training meets with what the job market i mean demands are we ready for okay come here before I yeah ask i i think um we also have a role to play as people who are a bit exposed to certain things of life and i believe that we as well need to coach and mentor mm -hmm. Our younger ones especially yeah. those who are not really exposed to their realities because your younger brother brother finishes school or your, your your siblings finish school and then the family is dictating to him or her what mm. she should do but you as a person who has probably traveled through the corridors of the university you are you are exposed to the fact that it's not just about the book and pen 
but it's about you being able to do something after getting mm. the certificate mm. so you should take it upon yourself to lecture or let the parents understand that it's not just about the university the person can also get to a vocational skills school afterwards the person has the potential of engaging other people yeah. creating a, a job and then engaging other people mm. so i think we also have a role to play we shouldn't just think that it's just about the white color jobs mm. sometimes the blue color jobs are more beneficial <laughs> than the white color jobs but then yeah. here we just feel like you know once the person is in suits he's making a lot of money mm. we have friends who work in banks but the carpenters at home are better than them mm. we have their buildings and all that so that is it we need to coach and mentor our younger ones they are still let me say illiterate as far as the realities of mm -hmm. life is concerned so we have to coach and they are also kind them. of following <laughs> blindly the way some of us blindly, yeah blindly. yeah so we shouldn't that when the frog in front falls in the pit others take caution so we have to make sure that those who are coming you know do not fall in the pit that we fell in mm -hmm. Oh, now I, I i want us we've looked at the health we've looked at some of the issues okay i think i've seen substance abuse and it falls in there i want us to look at mobility migration think, what are um, some of the uh, yeah i'm asking a question okay. on that some of the advice we can give to our young people i think you mentioned the area of tvet beyond tvet because people are traveling mostly out of the rural areas how can we be sustainable even in the rural areas without just traveling and choking the urban areas i think what the government needed to do is that the planting for food and jobs should mm -hmm. have been i mean an intervention to keep this kind of rural urban migration but mm -hmm. it, the, the whole thing has been politicized i believe the government could have recruited youth in these areas the rural areas to engage them actively in agriculture related issues mm. so that they would produce food to fit the country mm. but here's the case the policy is left in the hands of politicians mm. they manipul manipulate and decide how fertilizers and other farm implements should mm. be distributed mm. so i believe that the government can do something to keep this particular canker mm. or to you know just eradicate it because mm. it's really going to eat us up some days somehow so the planting for food and jobs program or i mean policy should be geared towards the, the, the youth and not just the politicians they shouldn't sit in their offices and dictate to the people how things should be done do you think we are ready as young people to take in those decisions because sometimes i see that we ourselves sometimes misbehave okay. we are not ready okay as you say we align the politicians kind of dictates how we should run our country okay. in the next few years okay in the area of that what advice can you give us to young people who feel that they should be given the position to lead or the opp opportunity to lead but they are not willing to understand that they need to actually take up the the the, the, the right approach it's, it's not just about you leading but it's about you being a leader and eh? being being a leader is easier than leading well and as a leader and as, as a person before you can lead very well you need to first of all lead yourself mm. within you you know the caliber of person you are you know the things that you want so lead yourself inwardly before before you lead any other person if you are not a leader within you can be a leader in real life so as youth i believe that we should be leaders within ourselves before we can lead and when i say leaders within ourselves be able to check yourself Put yourself on toes. I mean, I mean, I mean, put yourself on toes. Blame yourself certain times. I know you do that often. Sometimes you do something and you feel like, no, matter you've not done well. You know, you criticize yourself. Learn to criticize yourself. Once you criticize yourself, then the 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 the, the journey becomes so obvious because you know, no, this what I'm doing is not going to work well for me. So I have to do this and do that. So as young people, let's learn to dig deeper. I call I call it soul auditing. Let's audit our souls. Let's dig deeper into ourselves to know what we need to do and what not to do as young people of this country. Okay, Thank you. Might have something. Yes, so um, on the issue of, for instance, the migration you were talking about, you see, government projects or program scoping needs to change. Not a if you know a lot of people are moving from rural areas to urban areas, we've known this since time immemorial. 
what is the pool factor? That is it. That is the job opportunities, the higher remunerations among others. Facilities. So to ensure that what is pushing them, the push factor, what is pushing people from the rural areas to the, to the area. urban areas, if you know them, you address them. One is job opportunities. So why then do you build factories in places that are already choked? <laughs> you see, that's what I'm talking about, spreading the interventions. You should be able to spread it in such a way that in areas that people are having high incidence of migration, we have the statistics. What are their strengths? If their strength is in, should I say, um, rice farming, why don't you, uh, what do you call it, build a rice mill over there? It will employ them, it will ensure they have market for their produce, it will ensure those engaging in ancillary, um, I mean, practices like preparing of their bags also get employed. Those who are going to be cutting this with abubu yeah and tricycles and trucks who also get employed so you realize that there's a cascading effect with just that one intervention you've done there so it solves the problem of i mean unemployment there you have other places they are very good with whatever they have locally so look at the local resources the local strength and try to leverage on that to ensure that people stop migrating we know the push factors one of them is conflict mm -hmm. People sometimes migrate not because they need jobs. They want to have peace of mind. So why don't you address the root causes of these conflicts? Not just the cosmetic approach <laughs> where people face uh, conflicts. Then you just come around, try to placate them. Okay, why don't you have this and you to have this? Let's see if you can rest small. They go and rest small. Within some few years, the same issue, they are yeah. at it again. So why don't you approach? Is someone benefiting from the conflict? Because that is what it seems to me. Because when we have recurring conflict, it means that there is something there that some people are benefiting from that they don't want to miss. So if you're able to address the root cause of the conflict, those migrating for peace of mind will stay behind and help develop their local economy. That's one. Now, on the issue of, um, for instance, what you, the youth needs to do, some youth have been given the opportunity to lead and they have failed utterly. One, because of lack of discipline. So youth have to be disciplined. This is contained in the policy, actually. Youth have to be trustworthy. Youth have to be hardworking. The youth have to have the spirit of integrity, honesty. And someone do not give you his company or shop to run. You need a job. They give it to you. And then you are interested in siphoning some of the cash or profit for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, if that business runs at a loss, would the business keep employing you? No. No. If the business runs down and closes, both you and those that are benefiting from the business end up not having that to benefit from any longer. You should be, should be able to have the spirit of teamwork. A lot of people feel, oh, I can do it alone, I can do it alone. Or if I do it with these people, maybe the people won't recognize the impact I played, so I won't get the recognition. So people try to go the solo way, but we've always had the notion that two years are better than one. It's not just literary. It is, is the, the meaning is that when two people share ideas, you have more ideas. So you're able to brainstorm and know the best applicable approach. Yeah. When faced with challenge, when both of you brainstorm, you're able to come up with the best solutions mm. because you have alternatives to look at, to gauge the comparative, I mean, effect, defects, or even benefits within these ideas and leverage on them. Mm. But people like to go solo. So we have to have teamwork. Don't try to be selfish. We have to be selfless. So it is when we have selflessness that we realize that what I'm doing doesn't matter whether it benefits me today or tomorrow. I might be doing working very hard, but it might be benefiting somewhere else. You should also have the interests of others mm -hmm. at heart. So youth participation itself is not just giving them the chance to participate. It's about do they have the necessary values in them to be able to participate in such a way that it will benefit them and benefit those okay. around them okay it's it's getting quite very interesting here and then our time is almost up i want us to go for a break when we are back we wrap up stay tuned
welcome back i believe that this episode is giving you an okay. in-depth knowledge or information about what the national youth policy involves we all have to be up and doing we all need to understand that we have a part to play Eva was saying that it's for us by us and with us the policy is for us they have done it for us they have done it with us and at the end of the day if we do not actively participate we will not be able to see the good end of this policy northern region we've launched we've started we are on it it's a new year and i can imagine the many activities we are going to put together to make sure that this policy gets to as many young people as possible now let me come to tim tony we have just barely a few minutes so whatever yeah. you want to add up on this policy just go ahead and add up um i think um i want to speak on youth and volunteerism yes it's something that is really i think a couple of months ago we were asked about the volunteering spirit of the youth of this country it's and dead. we all said that it's it's, it's deadly dead and i want to put it that way it's deadly dead yeah none of us want to actually volunteer don't you and think the system is also dead yeah I, I, I would come to that none of us actually wants to volunteer and it's as a result of how things are structured in this country people are not really given the attention or what they deserve after volunteerism at least if i'm not going to be given something that would make me happy but please don't give me something that will make me sad or regret the fact that i decided to volunteer. demonstrate the selfless part of me but then as, as a person i have my standards and some call it principles i have one thing and on daily basis i re-echo it i drum into into my head if you don't work for nothing then you can't gain for nothing mm. until we are ready to work or demonstrate that selfless part of us we are not humans humanity is all about you impacting people or doing something for someone that can pay you back but as people or as a country it appears we have failed woefully in this area because it appears politicians or let me just say duty bearers have failed us you volunteer with an organization and when it's time for recruitment you know they're only going to you are just going to be there and then you hear like they've sent this number of people to your office at least if if, if, if you are not going to give me the opportunity to you know continuously serve the people but don't 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 give me broken heart right <laughs> basically you are telling me that i'm not doing well because if i were doing so well, stakeholders have a role to play yet they have a role to play to volunteer but always the blame is on us mm. but I think we are, we are we are simply doing the blame game mm. let's actually look at the root cause mm. what actually causes that mindset of mm. or that attitude i mean is our inability to appreciate people well and i believe that we need to learn to give people their flowers mm. while they are still with us mm. once they are dead their flowers are of no relevance mm. to them mm. it's just like um, gold is of no relevance to a tasty person mm. so flowers are of, of no relevance to a dead person mm. so let's learn to appreciate volunteers let's learn to give them what they deserve elsewhere they are giving the needed attention uh, myself and my colleague often we get onto international platforms to do applications once they see that you have a certificate in volunteerism they apply they kind of like they place some sort of value on you mm. but here what happens they don't even care they don't care because we don't actually know what it means to do something for nothing you know for no pay a couple of months ago in 2022 i think that was around october um, i was at panko youth center for a program and they had an intern or a volunteer from germany munich chris the mom actually paid panko youth center just for the guy to volunteer with them wow the mom paid them more than thousand euros just for him to come and volunteer with them but here what do we see eh? <laughs> we don't care we don't know what it means and that is why as a country we need to wake up from our slumber mm. things are really becoming basic mm. and if care is not taken it will continuously be that way mm. so that is it ima your final words on this thank you very much um what i want to say is that um, young people should take particular interest in issues surrounding them 
issues that goes on in their community i mean um, implementation issues project issues as well as policy issues because the policy is what drives whatever happens on the ground so we should take particular interest in that the national youth policy is here for all youth it doesn't matter whether you're a muslim you're a christian you're a traditionalist you're a male you're a female it doesn't matter your background financially edu or educational background or whatever everything that is linked with you as a youth is captured in that document once again i also use this opportunity to call on all necessary stakeholders to ensure that whatever role they need to play aside the youth they try as much as possible to play that role dispassionately they shouldn't look at what others are doing they should look at what they can do for the youth and do that with all their hearts the state agency ministry of youth and sports and national youth authority who have led in the formulation of this document should also show commitment because it is only when you show commitment that other stakeholders will come on board if you need to fund the implementation of the sub team fund them pump the fund or the cash into it don't go pumping funds into meetings <laughs> spending 1.5 million on tea this hey. does not work hey. anywhere you have the policy <laughs> ensure that the necessary monetary i mean support is given to it the necessary technical support also give it to it so that at the end we can all benefit from it mm. lastly anyone in the youth space thinking that they are doing something for the youth without the input of the youth is doing what he or she likes mm. there can be nothing for the youth without, without the youth so let yeah. us try as much as possible to involve the youth with whatever program or policy we are doing thank you very much you want to share your social media handles yeah because um, you'll be sharing most of the policies on your pages yeah, yeah i didn't give my final words ah your final words <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, your final words. Yeah, I think this goes to stakeholders, particularly the leadership at the national office of this, the National Youth Authority. The policy document should be left to gather dust. Mm. It is for the youth and it should be for the youth. Mm. All that is within the document. Let's find ways to implement them. Yeah. We shouldn't just harness resources just to be able to fill our accounts or fill our bellies. Let's remember someday or in the future will be judged based on what we are doing today mm -hmm. so if you are a leader over there and you believe that no one is watching you and for that matter you would manipulate the youth of this country don't forget that your lord is watching you mm -hmm. and as christians and as muslims we believe that all that we do mm -hmm. the lord sees us mm -hmm. so please let's not forget that god yeah, is watching the lord sees us and he keeps watching us now let me take your final words our time is up so, so um, social I, would media like to, I would like to give my i mean your social, social media handles my <laughs> social media handle uh, on facebook is alhasan musa tim tony and on twitter is at tim tony 12. Mm. i think these are the active okay. yeah um social media handles that i have yeah <laughs> so for me on facebook you have Emmanuel indukwe the Induque is N-D-U-K-W-E. On Twitter, we have at Induque Senior, at Induque underscore Senior. The Senior is S-N-R, not the full one. And also, we are going to be doing this um, dissemination on Yafo Facebook page. So you go to Yafo Ghana on Facebook, Yafo Ghana on Twitter. Same with the National Youth Authority. National Youth Authority, underscore. Northern Regional, Northern National Youth no, no sorry national, national youth, youth authority, authority underscore space N underscore n slash r yeah. same on twitter northern regional youth network also on facebook northern regional youth network also on twitter all thank right you thank you much. so much gentlemen for coming um this has been a conversation on the national youth policy making sure that you and i have their great information and education i've been speaking with alas and musa tintoni and emmanuel indukwe tochuku <laughs> they are all um <laughs> youth policy ambassadors I, i'm just you know, i'm thinking i was i can't say this all eh? <laughs> the name sounds away anyways it's been an amazing conversation and i believe that this year would give you greater opportunity and impact my name is martha in spice i'll be back with thoughts do stay tuned Welcome to Thoughts from Martha in Spice. Today, I want to ask you a personal question. Are you honest? 
We just finished a conversation about the national youth policy. And one of the highlights for me was if we want to take charge of the economy later in future as young people, we need to be honest. A lot of us are not honest. Like we, we, we just blame the politicians because we feel they're taking the bigger part of something that if we have the opportunity, we will take. If you are made the president of Ghana today, would you be honest? Don't forget that some of us once ever want to be bribed. We want to receive petty favors before we do something that we want, that we are supposed to do or we actually want to do. Are you honest as a young person? The national youth policy is not just for a say sake or for us to read it and make noise about it on social media and we are good to go and that's it. We need to be honest enough to hold our leaders accountable. If your employer employs you, make sure you are not stealing. When you are being taxed for something, make sure you are not stealing. When you are asked to do something accountable, make sure you are not stealing. Because if really we have to be the future leaders, that we have to be honest even at this point in our lives. In the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, how are you going to be accountable to your children? Ghana is for us. Africa is for us. And the world is for us because we live in it. Today, make a conscious effort. Go and sleep. Go and have a thought. Go and have a, a reflection. And ask yourself, have I been honest enough? We, we insult and, and disgrace unnest people. We feel that, ah, this person shouldn't be doing it because when they want to make the rules straight, we want to bend the rules. Corruption will take a very long time to go if honesty is not taken out of our system. We are happy that we are young people. We are happy that we are youth. But are we happy about the things that are happening in our country? People keep blaming the politicians, but you see, it begins from the grassroots. It begins down there. A lot of us want to go into politics because, oh, when I become the MP and the minister, I can take out some money. I can keep some money for us. Please, as we are in a, in a new year, add this to your resolutions that you're going to make sure that you will stay honest you'll be honest and you're going to be yourself as a young person honesty pays it will pay and it will continue to pay if you and i can change our mindset and be honest thank you for watching this episode and i believe that at the end of the day this can at least make a change touch someone's heart out there and we can reduce all that we have been talking and complaining about. I am Martha Winspice. Do have a good night.